For these next few examples, we are going to use function notation. So we're going to use f of x, g of x, and h of x above to first determine f of a. So to find f of a, we're going to use the function of f of x above. So we're going to have f of a equals f of x, which is x plus 3. But wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with a. So we have f of a now equals a plus 3. So the value of f of a is a plus 3. Now we want to determine f of b plus g of b. So let's first start off by finding f of b. So again, we're going to use f of x equals x plus 3 above. So we have f of b equals x plus 3. But wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with b. So we now have f of b equals b plus 3. So now we have the value of f of b, but now we need to find g of b. So g of b is given to be g of x equals x squared. So we're going to have g of b equals x squared. But wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with a b. So we have g of b equals b squared. So now we have f of b and we have g of b. So all we have to do is add these two values together. So we're left with f of b plus g of b. We found f of b to be b plus 3, and we found g of b to be b squared. So adding these two together, we want to rearrange them. So we have our highest exponent first. So we have b squared plus b plus 3. So f of b plus g of b is b squared plus b plus 3. Now we want to determine g of a minus h of a. So again, we're going to split it up and find g of a first. So we know that g of x is x squared, so g of a is also going to be equal to x squared. But now we need to replace our x with the value of a. So we have g of a now equals a squared. So now that we've found g of a, we need to find h of a. Well, h of x is given to be x minus 5, so we're going to have h of a equals x minus 5 as well. Now we want to replace x with a, and we're left with h of a equals a minus 5. So now that we have g of a and h of a, we can subtract these two values. So we have g of a minus h of a. We found g of a to be a squared, so we have a squared minus h of a, which is a minus 5. But as we can see, we have a negative sign outside of these brackets. So we're going to have to use our distribution laws and multiply this negative 1 by everything inside the brackets. So we still have a squared, but now we have negative 1 times a, which gives us negative a, and then negative 1 times negative 5, which leaves us with positive 5. So g of a minus h of a gives us a squared minus a plus 5. Example 4 wants us to find g of a minus f of negative b. So we're first going to start with finding g of a. So we know that g of x is x squared, so we have g of a also equals x squared. But we're going to replace our x with a. So we have g of a equals a squared. Now that we solve for g of a, we can solve for f of negative b. So we have our f of x equals x plus 3. So we're going to have f of negative b equals x plus 3 as well. But now we want to replace our x with a negative b. So we have f of negative b equals negative b plus 3. So now we have g of a and we have f of negative b. So now we want to subtract these two values. So g of a minus f of negative b. Our value of g of a we solved to be a squared and now we want to subtract our value of f of negative b, which we found to be negative b plus 3. So as we can see, we have a negative sign outside of brackets, so we're again going to use our distribution laws and multiply this negative 1 by everything inside of brackets. So we're left with a squared with negative 1 times negative b, which gives us positive b, and then negative 1 times positive 3, which gives us negative 3. So g of a minus f of negative b 
gives us a squared plus b minus 3. Example 5 wants us to determine f of g of z. So as we can see, we have a function within a function. So to do this, we are going to start with our innermost function of g of z. So we have g of z equals g of x, which is x squared. But we are going to replace x with the value of z. So we now have g of z equals z squared. So now that we solve for our innermost function of g of z, we can plug in the value of g of z into our whole function. So instead of f of g of z, we're going to have f of z squared. So f of z squared equals x plus 3. As we can see from f of x equals x plus 3 above. So now wherever we see our x, we are going to replace it with z squared. So f of z squared equals z squared plus 3. So the value of f of g of z equals z squared plus 3. For our final example, we are going to determine f of y multiplied by g of z. So we're first going to start by finding f of y. So we're going to use f of x equals x plus 3 to write f of y equals x plus 3. We are going to replace x with y. So we have f of y equals y plus 3. So now that we solve for f of y, we can solve for g of z. So g of x equals x squared. So we're going to have g of z equals x squared. And replace x with z. So we're left with g of z equals z squared. So now that we have f of y and g of z, we can multiply these two functions together. So f of y times g of z. Our function of f of y, we solve to be y plus 3. So now we want to multiply that by g of z, which we found to be z squared. Now using our distribution laws, we want to multiply this y by z squared, and then this 3 by z squared. So y times z squared gives us y z squared, and then 3 times z squared gives us 3 z squared. So f of y multiplied by g of z gives us yz squared plus 3z squared.